Hello, I'm Jillian and thank you for joining me. This video is called Four Activities for Analysis of Qualitative Data. You've just collected your data and you're faced with making sense of pages of notes, hours of interviews, and numerous videos and photographs. It's hard to know where to begin. If yours is an inductive study, so the themes are not predetermined as in a deductive study, but rather they are revealed by the data, and if you're analyzing by hand so you're not using computer software, this is an especially overwhelming task. To help manage the process and create a plan, I think of analysis as four activities, immersing, organizing, connecting, and broadening. And I cycle through these activities, keeping track of my progress and my thoughts in an analysis journal. Let's take a look at each activity. Begin analysis by immersing yourself in all forms of your data. In a relaxed setting and with an open mind, read, watch, listen to, and examine everything you collected, more than once. Discover the details and the nuances embedded in the data. Search for the mysteries your data want to reveal and the story your data want to tell. But don't rush this activity or try to force the data. Take time to fully engage and to luxuriate in wonderment. How often really do we give ourselves permission to do that? And make sure to write jot notes so you keep track of your discoveries, your ideas, your thoughts, your insights. With this activity, the key is to become very, very familiar with your data. Knowing your data really well will enable the deeper levels of analysis that are coming. Not knowing your data will limit your ability to successfully proceed. Key themes will have emerged in the previous activity. These are the main ideas or main concepts to be understood and conveyed. Use a flowchart or another type of organizer to experiment with various ways that these themes might be arranged. For example, are the themes part of something larger? And if so, what might that main theme be? Or are two of these the main themes and the others are sub-themes of those? Or are some of the themes actually sub-sub-themes? Or maybe there's another way to organize. Don't be afraid to play around with this a little. You're actually creating a rudimentary conceptual framework. This framework might mimic what already exists in the literature, or it could be entirely new. Regardless, it should be an authentic representation of your data. In other words, do not force your data into a framework. The framework doesn't have to be perfect, as we will discuss shortly, but it should not require too much of a struggle to make it work for the data. Life is messy. So you can expect empirical qualitative data to also be messy. This means that your themes, your sub-themes, and your sub-sub-themes are likely not as discrete as your framework might imply. But it doesn't mean you should discard all frameworks. On the contrary, a framework is helpful, often invaluable, in understanding and coherently presenting results for discussion and for peer review. So acknowledge, explore, and explain where, why, and how leaking, cross-connections, and interrelationships occur. With this activity, you begin to derive more sophisticated insights and meanings from the data. Additionally, don't be afraid of a few inconsistencies, discrepancies, and outliers. These are ideas that just don't seem to fit anywhere. They can be really informative. So don't ignore them, but rather strive to understand and explain them. If the cross connections and irregularities seem too numerous, or you're having trouble maintaining the rationale for your framework, it may be because the framework itself is inadequate for representing your data and your results. That realization will send you back to the previous stage of organizing, but with more knowledge and understanding of your data. So have faith that a more authentic framework will emerge. I nickname this the so what and why should anyone care analysis activity. Here, you will pull yourself out of your own study and prepare to join the conversation among scholars who are interested in the same topic area as you. There are two primary considerations. 
The first is, how does your study relate to existing scholarship? So think about what your results mean in light of what's already been reported. For example, do they add to, confirm, or undermine the work of others and in what ways? The second, what are your recommendations based on your results for future research, policy, practice, Think about where the gaps may still exist in knowledge and experience and how they might be addressed by further research. What do your results indicate for practitioners, for policymakers? What action might they take? You are the expert on your study, your data, and your results. So it is your responsibility and also your privilege to make these recommendations. This analysis activity relies on knowledge of the scholarly literature. If you know the literature well, you will be able to make appropriate and insightful connections and observations. If you do not know the literature well, your ability to do that will be limited and the potential impact of your study weak. You may have done your literature review a year, even two years prior to this point, so make sure that you're up to date. These four analysis activities do not necessarily represent a linear progression. As you progress through them, your understandings broaden and deepen and become more nuanced and refined. So it's often necessary to revisit earlier activities or to jump ahead. One example we already talked about is if the framework falls apart during the connecting activity. But this may also occur while immersing if complex connections among data points and between data and the literature are recognized before the data have been organized into themes or when making connections to the literature indicates a previously unrecognized theme in your data. This is why a journal is so important. It will help you keep track of things when they get complicated. In my experience, many students get stuck or simply stop after organizing. Their reports are more like data summaries than analysis results. So push through connecting and broadening. This is where meanings and understandings that have the best chance of making a contribution will emerge. Here's a summary of what we talked about. Let me know if you find it helpful or if you have any other tips.